I am dead, dearest Dante, but I am a banisher yet. I may still teach you. In a sea of sequels, Banisher's Ghosts of New Eden has a wonderfully fresh story to tell. I didn't know I wanted to play as a ghost hunting detective in a supernatural alternate reality version of 1600s America, but developer Don't Nod provides such a compelling mix of death, drama, and romance, it made me wonder why no one had tried this sooner. It mostly sticks the landing with the things it tries beyond that story as well, from the excellent concept of swapping between your living and ghostly protagonists to its absolutely stellar investigation mechanics. That said, other parts of Banishers aren't as original, borrowing the bulk of its structure from plenty of action-adventure games before it, but with stiff and repetitive combat that can't stand up to those inspirations. Even still, for those in favor of weird games brimming with heartbreak and ectoplasm alike, this isn't one you'll want to miss. At the last, there was a pain, like someone reached into my chest and crushed my heart. Banishers Ghosts of New Eden is the latest in a genre I've inadvisably taken to calling crevice crawlers. That's right, crevice crawlers. You know, those third-person games with a serious story and slow pacing, where two people walk around and talk to one another in hushed tones in between combat encounters, and for some reason, you spend a lot of time squeezing through crevices. I'm talking God of War, A Plague Tale, The Last of Us, classic crevice crawlers. Charlie, don't go in the crevice! I'm going to the no, crevice, right. the crevice! <sighs> Anyway, while I quite enjoy the occasional sad whispering duo sidling through rubble, at this point the formula is also pretty played out. In the case of Banishers, it made the adventure feel more familiar than I cared for, even with its refreshingly original setting. Though it certainly doesn't win points for innovation, Banishers executes on this blueprint quite well, with strong writing, likable characters, and a few good twists and turns in the story to make for an enjoyable cross-country odyssey. Playing as Red, the overly emotional Scotsman with hair that's way too cool for the time period. Do we kill? To be together again. And Antea, the ill-tempered master ghost hunter who is a ghost herself. Our good friend's death shall not go unpunished. You'll travel around talking to all kinds of pilgrims in order to solve their hauntings. As occult experts called banishers, it's your job to seek out ghosts, help them resolve their unfinished business, then send them to the afterlife. And that ends up being exactly as fun as it sounds. Seriously, who doesn't want to be a dope slayer of specters and run around banishing spirits like an oops all ghosts Geralt of Rivia? As with a lot of games like it, Banishers does suffer from some pacing issues. There's lots of repeated story beats where our heroes retread the same ground as they process their grief and discuss their dilemma. And you'll be asked to crawl through dark places, climb mountainsides, and wait in extremely slow elevators while your characters talk about how much of a bummer death is. Your death pains us greatly. Your return pains me too. Thankfully, most of the time the writing is good enough to justify that pace, but I definitely sighed deeply whenever I rested at a campfire and had to watch this animation every single time. God only visits hardship upon us because he knows we can bear it. The supernatural reimagining of colonial America is a fantastic backdrop for the tale of love and loss at the center of things, with death and the afterlife constantly looming over our paranormal heroes. When Antea is killed in the story's opening moments, Red finds himself working in tandem with the very thing he's supposed to combat, which creates a really cool dilemma where you'll need to decide to stay the course and work toward your partner's ultimate banishment or forsake your duties in an attempt to bring her back to life. Wandering around the countryside to help others resolve their own losses and uncovering the sordid history of New Eden gives you plenty of opportunities to decide what kind of ghost hunter you want to be, with lots of morally gray situations you'll be asked to weigh in on. You've both made your choices. Now it's my turn. However, it is a little disappointing that, with all the interesting supernatural mysteries they set up, you only get three nuance-free options to choose from at the end of each case. You can either give the ghost its ascent, which is a friendly way of sending it back to the afterlife, banish the ghost, which is basically just an aggressive way of doing the same thing, or you can blame the living, killing them and absorbing their essence in your quest for power. The only way to bring your love back from the dead is by sacrificing as many people as possible, so blaming the living is mostly presented as the evil choice, even when some of these humans totally deserve to get got. 
Meanwhile, banishing or ascending the dead are usually framed as two flavors of the right thing to do, even in cases where a living person is clearly in the wrong. Did you poison him with Quicksilver? Is he here in search of revenge? Yes. I stole a few months of Joffrey Rowling's life to save decades of my sisters. In many scenarios, having to choose just one of those conclusions feels like you're being unnecessarily forced to pick a side. Or worse yet, you're just choosing the option that's going to get you to whichever ending you're shooting for. He has told the truth. You may go in peace. That doesn't stop it from being extremely cool to step into the boots of two ghost investigators, though, as you swap between your living and dead characters to make use of their unique abilities as you hunt for clues, track your quarry through the woods, and interview suspects. As Red, you're able to perform dope rituals to do things like see visions from the past via psychometry or compel spirits to show themselves. While as Antea, you can see invisible objects hidden in the world and use your awesome and kinda terrifying spectral powers to do stuff like this. Swapping between the two perspectives to uncover clues, overcome simple logic puzzles, and solve mysteries is without question the best part of Banishers, and made me eager to tackle every new haunting case that popped up on the map. The instant character swapping carries over into Combat 2, where you'll either be fighting with sword and rifle as Red, or throwing phantom haymakers and using ghost powers as Antea, and the concept mostly succeeds there as well. What starts out as a fairly barebone system of dodge rolling, parrying, and light and heavy attacks gradually evolves into something much more compelling, as you unlock abilities throughout the adventure. For example, I absolutely love the unlockable perks that let you time your swapping between characters in the middle of a hit combo to do this. By the end, I was able to swap back and forth between the two without a break in my assault, triggering special maneuvers like this one along the way. Combat definitely has some hiccups though, as controlling your characters often feels pretty clunky. Movement can be sluggish or downright unresponsive as you get caught on the smallest things when you roll around. Sometimes the camera can also move in erratic ways, especially when it's trying to focus on something with Banisher's hit or miss lock-on system. I was playing on the hardest difficulty and died on more than one occasion when the lock-on system wouldn't do its thing or would bizarrely point the camera in the opposite direction of the enemy. It's still enjoyable to take on armies of apparitions, but combat is definitely missing a certain level of polish that can be pretty frustrating. Enemy variety also became painfully scarce less than halfway through the roughly 30 hours it took me to complete the story, as there's only a handful of enemy types that are added far too slowly to keep combat fresh. Wolves, which are introduced right at the beginning, became especially tiresome when I was still seeing them 20 hours later, and I cannot even begin to describe to you how many of those poor furry beasts I sent whimpering into the afterlife. That said, most of the monsters in the mix are at least interesting to fight, from specters that dive into the corpses of other enemies to reanimate them, to skeletal marksmen who keep their distance and try to take you out with a rifle. I just wish I didn't have to see the same undead faces so often, because by the end, even my favorites had become irritations. Taste Banisher's Ghosts of New Eden is a fun action game with a solid concept and a stellar paranormal investigation system. Its story about struggling to let go of loved ones in death is worth hearing, even when its pacing occasionally gets sluggish and indulgent. The combat system also tries some interesting new things that largely work out, only dragged down by poor enemy variety and wonky controls. Still, swapping between the corporeal and ghostly planes instantaneously is every bit as cool when solving mysteries as it is during fights, and the writing and characters help carry banishers across its rougher patches. That made saying goodbye to them fittingly difficult, decaying flesh and all. In the end came death, and death remains. For more, check out our reviews of The Inquisitor or Persona 3 Reload. And for everything else, stick with IGN.